Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Heavenly Parent Holy Community Oceani Hundoke with Reverend Yutaka Yamato. Today being Saturday, the 17th of July or the 8th of June in the ninth year of Chongul Brook. So let's begin by offering a bow to our Heavenly Parent and True Parents, Chariot Kyombe. And let's recite our family pledge, both in Korean and English. Thank you. Kajom men se sa chonilguk chuin uri kajogun cham sarangul chunshimago hanil pumonime chanjo isain chonju te kajogul hyonson hayo chayua pionfawa toinugua hemboge seger wanson halkosil. Family pledge number four. Our family, the owner of Chongul Group, pledges to build the universal family encompassing heaven and earth, which is the heavenly parents' ideal of creation, and perfect the world of freedom, peace, unity, and happiness by centering on true love. And uh, I'd like to ask uh, Reiko Stone if she could offer the opening prayer, please. Dearest Heavenly Parents, true parents of the heaven and earth and humankind, we are grateful for this new day. We gather together as Oceania uh, community and uh, um, attend you. We are grateful the, for your love and true parents' uh, investment for their life. And we know that this is a time that uh, all the investment will uh, bring fruits centered on uh, true father in the spiritual world, true mother in the uh, physical world, working together with all the uh, blessed families around the world. We are so grateful that we can live together same time as true parents on this earth and uh, we can work together we pray that uh, we can work together to create your, restore your ideal world so that you and human beings and all things, all um, the, uh, have a joyful uh, time together as you originally intended. So we sincerely, to start this morning, Fundoke, we sincerely pray that your spirit be present and the uh, true parents spirit be present and guide this time so that we can uh, connect our hearts to you. Thank you for this time. We pray and report in the name of Reiko Stone Stone family, bless the center family, Aju. Aju. Thank you. And let's uh, give a warm welcome to Reverend Yataka as he shares with us this morning. Thank you. Good morning, our brothers and sisters. Thank you for coming this morning from the Kuei. Really appreciate everyone, your heart and your chanson, and also your sincere uh, devotion. And really appreciate our heavenly parents and true parents to give this special moment in the beginning of the day and also the beautiful day all the time. We will put our prayer and let's offer our heart to our heavenly parents and true parents. Today, uh, there is also Chombo Great Works event. So, uh, liberate our ancestor, liberate our spiritual world, and how we can live together with spiritual world as the Chombo family, as the blessed family, beyond our the physical world and spiritual world, live together. This is uh, the important message. So even during this Fundoke moment, our ancestor and also the spiritual body, spiritual spirit from the each nation, each region also joining together. We are standing here 
we have of them with our physical body. So they are coming down, they are staying together, living together, and working together. So when we offer chansong, when we do activity, they are also coming, and if we fulfill, they can also grow up and develop together. That's why when we spend the time, let's also uh, think and pray for each of our sisters and also each of them. Then really we can have a great time. So today is a Chombo Great Walks. So you can join and you can watch also the video. Then you can receive some guidance or inspiration. So let's uh, start well. So now uh, we are sharing about Tree Mother's autobiography, especially the part of Ocean Providence. So from yesterday, I'm sharing about the Tree Parents' word uh, relating with Ocean Providence. So yesterday, Father, share about uh, fishing and chansong. So today, content is to have a continuation of that, that contents. So when Tree Parents, Tree Father, is was at the boat the father was communicating with all creation talking with bird talking with also the mountain top and talking to them now you are waiting for a long time and finally i came here as a central person of the providence so all of you now you have to align with god and you cooperate with me then you will be liberated so father talk to the nature and all creation so how much big heart do your parents have how about our standing point or our position we are also standing the center of the history result of the history and starting point of the history so even i'm not sure your room is big or not but even our room is small, but we are standing center of the universe, center of the world. So like true parents, always embrace and guiding and stand as the absolute subject position toward environment. So even challenging environment, even any kind of situation, true parents never change his point. His standing point absolutely stand the absolute subject position and to change the environment not three parents was changed by environment he changed the environment and did everything so this is our three parents attitude and those attitude also uh, we should have so even any kind of situation always we will have this kind of heart as a center of figure and absolute subject to the environment and we will lead this our family our society nation and the world father said i'm not go to the ocean to fish the fish i go to ocean to fish the world how we can have those heart together so we could receive and we can inherit and connect with our three parents heart so let's continue today's also the part this is a continuation so this is from champumogyon you can hear all sorts of sounds on land the sound of the wind blowing the sound of tree branches swaying the sound of people and the sound of mice running around but the only thing you hear at sea is the sound of water even though it is a sound there is a sameness about it so it does not bother you when you go out some distance you no longer hear the sound of flies buzzing buzzing you no longer hear human sounds there is no better place to practice spiritual discipline so 
Terfada is describe, describing about environment at the, the ocean. So can you imagine that when you stay on the sea, you can feel and you can hear the sound of water, just calm, just peaceful, and can hear the sound of water. So how about our life environment? What kind of sound can you hear? Now, of course, in, at, in the morning, maybe there is not many sound, noisy sound. But how about the daily life? What kind of sound always we can hear? Many sound of car, many sound of the people who are walking, and also natural sound. Maybe some countryside or some country, you could hear the voice of chicken, right? Or animal. So there are many kinds of sound and we are living every day surrounding or with many kinds of sounds. That's why parents sometimes leave those kind of world or land and society and went to the ocean and three parents had the spiritual discipline moment calm down and communicate and meditate so how much those moment is a grateful moment spiritual discipline is the practice of meditation and self-discipline through spiritual discipline, we can enter a state of harmony in the world of the mind. That is why I do not stay at home, but go out to see where the wind blows on a small boat called the One Hope. It is not comfortable being on that boat. However, it helps me find the center of my inner mind. Spiritual discipline so in order to do in order to develop our spiritual sense we need to have meditation and also that training and father said we can enter a state of harmony in the world of the mind we need to have this kind of moment so please reflect your life recently when did you have this kind of the spiritual discipline moment recently this month or last month or this year when did you have this moment without thinking anything just you communicate just you face to your mind and meditate and feel and pray deeply how many things do we have every day what kind of thinking are we thinking every moment thinking about family thinking about our job thinking about our finance thinking about our activities friend and also the myself all the moment we are living in the busy place so sometimes we have to put down everything and we have to face our mind. We have to face to our heavenly parents and true parents and to communicate and meditate. Father said, it is not comfortable being on that board. However, it helps me find the center of my inner mind. So how much we can, we are having this kind of a peaceful moment, the state of harmony in the world of the mind. When we have those moments always, we ha can have more confidence, we can have more peaceful, and we can have more space to embrace the people, love people, and living for the sake of others. So when we heard, when we lead this message, we are really immediately uh, we want to go to the ocean, right? This moment, really, we can imagine how beautiful to stay together and to communicate with our heavenly parents. People tend to think about going out fishing on a boat when 
the weather is clear and they feel good. That is what ordinary people do. But in order to become a special person, you need to fish amid sudden downpours and lightning storms. Unless you fish in the driving rain and study how the torrent changes the water and affects the fish, you will not know how changes in the natural environment affect your fishing. So Father is talking about the fisherman or the person who will go to the fishing. Father and mother, three parents doesn't go the fishing as their hobby. They go as the chonson and put their heart and find that many kind of way. So not only easy environment, easy weather or good weather, even the raining situation, even storming, or in waving time or lightning moment to the parents go to the ocean and find the best solution or best moment to get the fish so this is really we could see always our three parents attitude how about ourselves before doing something before challenging or before starting anything how about ourselves always my thinking is coming my concept, my preconcept, my imagination or my experience is coming. Today is raining day, maybe not easy. Today is COVID, maybe not easy to do activity, witnessing. Last time I did with business here, but last time I failed. That's why maybe this time also difficult. Last time I tried to do many things, but this time is not easy. So how much our concept, how much our own thinking is coming always? But how about our two parents' attitude? Even raining day, even shining day, even lightning day, he tried to find a way. Maybe there is another solution. Maybe there is another changing. All the way, all the angle, all the view, continuously believe, invest, and find this is our true father's attitude to invest then finally open the way and fulfill the providence and even opening the gate of new era new chernico so those what the sharing even true parents is sharing even true father is sharing about fishing but those attitude we could learn and we could inherit and even we could apply in our daily life. I built a boat named Chon Song Ho, Heaven's Victory, in Korea in 1963. I went to America to carry on that tradition and built a boat called the One Hope. It is not two hope, it is one hope. With absolute hope, absolute love, and absolute oneness, I am journeying on the one and only way it is a journey based on a realm where there is unity among the elements of the trinity the principle that i take pride in having discovered god's purpose and will and the direction that i take so father go the one and only way absolute hope absolute love and absolute oneness so one hope so this uh talking about one um absolute oneness and in korean what uh they are talking father is talking about the absolute uniqueness also that's why we are having the absolute way the only one and absolute unique absolute hope and absolute oneness so always father's way is clear where he should go where mother should go only one of the way only one way and one hope this is final goal always to the parents reminding this meeting with god direction and also the principle so when we think about ourselves to the parents always declare his way and clearly 
he is mentioning sharing about this, those messages absolute hope absolute love absolute oneness absolute faith and also absolute love or all things how about ourselves can we proclaim proudly or strongly or with confidence about absolute hope i have absolute hope i have absolute love i'm doing absolute oneness can we proclaim in front of people, in front of God, and in front of heaven and earth, absolute faith and absolute hope? Do we have absolute hope? Father is mentioning, but those Father's word is not only just talking for Father, Father himself, Mother herself. Always, how about ourselves? Do we have this kind of hope? We are coming here as a unification movement with true parents every day come together pray together doing activity and doing and living our blessed family life but really do we have this same heart this absolute hope and also absolute love we have to develop more and pray and also inherit our heavenly parents I have been on board for several decades. Invariably, I used to go out on the board from five o'clock in the morning and stay on the water until sunset or later. After coming to Yosu, sometimes I went out at noon, but then I saw that all of you went out at the time as well. It is okay to do that this time, but remember that in your life, you need to inherit and carry on my tradition. It is a tradition of going out to sea at 5 a.m. in the morning and offering conditions of devotion even when there are no fish. So what Father is talking about? Father is talking about today, if I don't go to the ocean, at the morning just if i go the lunch time you will go the lunch time so father said it's okay now but you have to inherit father's tradition so what kind of story father is talking about about our attitude and also our life of faith so centering on what kind of mind we are living all the moment Father, investing those heart and chansong and preparation for fishing and even those heart for heavenly parents and all human beings. So what kind of way we are going and we should go. So Father is talking about, please inherit, our, inherit my attitude and my devotion and my tradition. If true parents stay together, if we joining early morning with Fundoke with two parents, we will do well. But if two parents is not here, father is not here, mother is not here, nobody is watching us, then our life is different. So this thing is really the way we should go or the way our two parents wish or not. So two parents mentioning, please inherit our, our two parents tradition. When I was fishing in Alaska, the coast guard saw our boats going out in the early morning as if we were engaged in training exercise. They came to my boat and expressed their admiration and praise, saying, how could you be so serious about fishing? So when father was doing in Alaska, the fishing, the court guard saw every morning and they are really surprised why wow, you are really great so outside people also surprised because every morning 5 a.m or before that go out to the ocean and also around 12 midnight come back usually if people think if people go to the ocean about fishing they will go as the hobby or leisure or enjoyment but how about our father or our unification members go to fishing as the training chanson every moment even beautiful day or a serious day 
That's why even the outside people, they are even the God, they are surprised and praise the spirit, the lifestyle. At sea, I am the best fisherman. If I were asked to catch whales right now, I am sure I could catch a few whales in a single day. I have already caught practically every kind of fish, including giant bluefin tuna. I have been to the, the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, and the Mediterranean Sea. There is hardly any type of fish I have not caught. This is why I can clearly observe the affairs of the world. So father have a really experience and also conviction about fishing. So even any area become the professional experience and confidence how much great father really invest all the sea not only pacific ocean atlantic ocean and the mediterranean sea and all the places in america korea so we could see in south america jaljin and brazil paraguay all the place so we can see how a beautiful of father's attitude So this is really beautiful things. And also our Mr. Alai also shared a beautiful video and also the photo. Well, that's really grateful life to inherit father's spirit directly through the fishing. So when we go to the fishing, please remind and connect. We are just on the boat, just looks like fishing one day or two day, but inside of those moments, we could connect with our true parents yesterday also reverend santos share the beautiful experience in korea nepal doesn't have sea right nepal doesn't have ocean but you go to the ocean in yosu and the fishing so we are listening those fathers sharing or mothers sharing but listening and experiencing is really different so our young generation or if the person who never experienced about fishing or even ride the boat, never feel this experience. That's why even one day is okay, or even half a day. If you don't have an experience about fishing, please go to the, any place to the ocean and you can hire the boat or you can find a way to go to the ocean and please try to have a fishing. Please feel the beautifulness and calm or even waving, even challenging onto the boat, then you can feel the same feeling and experience. Because the experience, what we have, only this experience we can bring to the spiritual world. So how we can feel, connect with our heavenly parents' heart and true parents' heart loving really the earth and the nature and the world so really we are busy we have to do many kind of things during the lifetime so each moment uh, really the grateful exciting moment we can create and we can fulfill everything as if we dream and we visualize and we imagine we can fulfill and we can uh, achieve surely those things. So now I'm sharing about a father's message from Champ Mogyon about fishing and about ocean progress. So I think one more, one or two more days, I will share about uh, this father's message. Then we will go back to the mother's autobiography. So I will share also the Chon Song Yong word uh, this Chon Song Yong word is also the important, so I will share continuation of last message. Everyone have a Chon Song Yong? There is a three uh, heavenly scripture. Now the Chon Song Yong, Pyeong Fa Gyong, and Cham Pum Gyong. These three books is really essence and important. And also we have a eight great textbook 
eighth great textbook is also the Tiru Father's autobiography and Divine Principle and the 600 Father's all books. So many kinds of books we are having now. So even any moment, please have a time and please leave. Then different point, different guidance and different point to the parents' sharings. So we are not sure which kind of message to the parents is giving to us. So all the way. And there is another way. If you have a topic which you want to get answer, if you go to internet, there is many to the parents word already inside the website. So you can find, for example, Johnson or Future Dream, even the business, even art, even my hobby, my life, my purpose, any kind of word you type, then those words you can get. Then you can gain the inspiration or special or spiritual guidance. So always we connect with our word is important. So I will read this. When you see the bushy, bushy eyebrows on your face, you may be displeased with them and wonder why do i have these bushy things here without them wouldn't you have a cleaner better looking face so why are they there if the human face were covered with four would we need eyebrows animals which crawl on the ground do not need eye blows although they have a blow line yet human beings who walk upright absolutely need eye blow the eyebrow area usually protrudes slightly like a sculpted mountain range it is the spot most likely to indicate good fortune why is it made like this? Because someone knew that human beings would walk upright. So, Chan Sung Yong, what Father is mentioning about eye and ear, and now talking about eyebrow and face. So, why Father is sharing those kind of message? Because even those small parts, small things, but behind of or inside of the small parts of our human beings or even small parts of the nature we could find god and we could find some existence behind of that that's why how many times or how often do we feel god's existence the things around us today we are spending or staying here and how how often really we can find and we can feel god through small things or even something when we see about eye when we see about ear or face so all that place there is god's existence or some kind of the evidence of god so if we are praying we are seeking and we are trying to find then god can visit our heart through dream and through realization and through the people so all the moment how we try to find the seek our god and heart or message and even we can discover the new things through those uh, environment or uh, through existing around us so today when you i just shortly share about the chon song word so today I share about Champu Mogyon, about fishing, and also the Chon Song Gyon about God's existence. So each moment is the special moment. Today already uh, July 17, 2021. July 17 is really the father's sonfa in the uh, lunar calendar, July 17. So each moment, each day, we can connect our heart, our true father and also our true mother and our heavenly parents. When, even when we talk with family members, when we talk our friend, when we even eating time, how about God? Are you happy or not? How about our ancestors now listening today? 
Are you happy? Are you inspiring or inspire today or not? Are you challenging or not? Struggling or not? Every moment we are meeting together. How are you? Are you happy day today? Are you having some struggling things? Are you worried something? We are also concerned, pray. So we can see your face. We can see, we can hear your voice and we can feel today you are really good day. Today, maybe you are something difficult. So when we think each other, when we feel each other, when we really concern together, this is really the family. This is the community. And this is the really nation we want to wish and our heavenly parents wish as the family. So all the moment, really grateful everyone and grateful our heavenly parents and true parents. Let's offer the happiness, grateful moment and share the blessing to our brothers and sisters and everyone. Thank you very much again. Kamsamida. Thank you very much, Reverend Yutaka, as always. You're yeah, really you know, sharing uh, a lot of insight and, and understanding about our, our true parents' uh, life. And uh, I was uh, thinking uh, as, as you were talking there and reflecting on on this uh, whole idea of uh, one one hope uh, and uh, uh, personal tradition, uh, uh, I realised you know, uh, that uh, our tradition is really to inherit our true parents' tradition, and you know, father father saying uh, uh, you know, that his his tradition is always uh, to go fishing from five a.m. Actually, he's, he prepares earlier than that, but actually on the water by 5 a.m. And, uh, and just that statement where he said that uh, in Yosu, he went out at 12 and then noticed that everyone else did the same. And, and he's saying that, yeah, it's okay to do it that time, but, uh, but actually uh, it would have been better for them to go out at 5 a.m. I think father would have been happier that uh, we are uh, following the tradition from our own motivation, uh, not just uh, uh, copying. Uh, uh, so I was, I was reflecting on you know, how much have I converted true parents' tradition as my own personal tradition, you know, something that I just naturally do uh, and uh, and then have that uh, ex experience of harmony uh, in oneness uh, in that process I mean I've had I've had you know moments of you know uh, bliss you know when I it, yeah, f uh, touched God's heart and I felt really one but uh, father is saying that that spiritual discipline that that uh, practice of, uh, of uh, meditation involves uh, self-discipline. It's easy to have a coach push you along the way, but when the coach is not there anymore, you know, do you still you know, continue? So finding that strength to have uh, that personal uh, tradition, you know, which is totally aligned with true parents' tradition, uh, is still uh, a goal <laughs> that I'm uh, 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 struggling and practicing with uh, uh, every day uh, to have that that hope because you can go through the motions, but the hope is like uh, a brightness, uh, uh, a positive uh, expression of, of love. So when you hope something, it's really, wow, excited about it. So uh, finding that, uh, again, you know, building that unity and harmony. And, and so for me, just reflecting on that spiritual discipline uh, is, is actually the, the process about, uh, for me, converting true parents' tradition into my own personal tradition. So yeah, I was uh, thinking, yeah, that's our, our common goal, I think. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, open it up to others. Thanks. Yes, uh, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, hi, good morning, everyone. And uh, I had a few points, just let me get collected here. Um, yeah, about the personal tradition. So um, I've had several experiences fishing next to father and uh, I learned a lot of things. And um, when we were in Kodiak, um, I, I had a deep experience directly with father um, where her mother was due to come to Kodiak and we'd been out fishing. And the leaders there told us to come home from fishing and to greet true mother coming back. And um, Gerald Trass and I were the first people to walk up the path. Father was right there waiting for the car to come in. And of course, we're being attending properly, doing, you know, <laughs> we're all trying to have the right attitude, you know how it is. And we walked up to Father and he turned around and he looked at me and he said, why did you come back so early? So it was really, uh, there's a lot of lessons there, right? And you're talking about making the tradition your own. So we were motivated to do the right thing, but Father's expectation was that we stay out there longer. He can greet Mother. He doesn't need us to greet Mother. He wanted us out on the river. So that's a lesson for me as... You're talking about your personal tradition. And it's also a lesson for the leaders, you know, that what is the real tradition? Because we're talking about the fishing providence and it's very different to the, um, what are they called? The Levite tradition, right? Levites are the people in the Bible that are, were never supposed to earn money. They were the spiritual tribe, the Levites. And when we joined the church, we were all Levites. You know, but as things branched out, then um, we went and did different things. So just a, I don't want anyone to think that, oh, the leaders were wrong or that was wrong. No. You know, we all did, our motivation was good. But as you say, John, it's very, we have to think a lot about what true father's real tradition is and why are we doing things and not always to go by the book. For instance, we never did pledge, we never went to Sunday service once in one month in Kodiak, but we did the pledge early every day and we got out there on the river. I used to have a T-shirt that said, I'd rather be out fishing thinking about God than sitting in church thinking about fishing. So uh, <laughs> anyway, that just quickly, um, in watching and fishing beside Father on the river, he used exactly the same fishing rods we did he used the same lures, same bait. So I realised that he was setting up conditions, not as a superhero, but conditions that if we did the same, we could be successful. He didn't go out there and, and absolutely give all his power to make conditions. He set up conditions and the success came at the same level that we can get success. So they're all made for us. You know, everything he did that we can follow. You know, so I just don't want people to think that Father's a superhero and we can't do that. We, we can be successful if we emulate what he did. And just one last thing quickly. True Mother doesn't particularly like fishing. She loves the ocean and she probably loves the ocean more than Father does because she's the encapsulation of the natural world. She's the physical encapsulation of the Holy Spirit. So she doesn't like sashimi and things like that, but she did it for Father, right, to unite with him fishing and also she does love the environment so that when you go back a few days back and you see that mother standing there father's holding a big salmon that was the largest salmon caught on the Kulak river that year and mother caught that fish herself so she went out and did that and that big tuna you see father standing before beside that's the tuna he caught after 21 days so interesting anyway that's all thank you <laughs> thank you thank you chris yeah. Uh, yes, Doug, go ahead. Yeah, this is really a, an enjoyable 
opportunity to share uh, memories of the ocean and so many things being said every day. It's quite exciting. <coughs> before I joined the church, um, pretty almost immediately before I joined the church, I was on, I lived on a boat uh, at sea for a little under a year and a half, you know. So every day I was looking at the ocean. <laughs> but the boat is very different than most people uh, could imagine. We had 5,000 people on it. Uh, it was an aircraft carrier. <laughs> and my uh, spiritual search um, began on a boat. So I, I had memories coming to me of how I would go to where the anchor would come down off the aircraft carrier. It was the only place I could find alone. And I would sing Amazing Grace over and over and over and over again. And uh, it was a popular song around the world at that time in 1971. And from that boat, um, you know, I would cry singing that song and really thinking about God. So for me, the ocean was the place where I began my search. It was even on that boat. That was the first time I ever heard of, the, uh, of um, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Arai, you know, 1971. <laughs> uh, they were in the 777 couples blessing. And I found it in a little magazine you know, Time Magazine. And I was stunned, you know, that some man named Reverend Sun Myung Moon married 777 couples, you know? <laughs> so that boat has memories for me. But the, the story that I really wanted to share was one of the favorite experiences I had in my life is that living on Long Island, uh, we lived next to Freeport. Um, it's only 20 minutes away. It's the very first place where True Father fished in the United States of America. And um, I found that out from a, a book that I had just read around, I can't remember, it was 1997 to 2002, and it was called God's Will in the Ocean. So having read the book around that time, can't remember the exact year, I got really excited and I was talking about it to everyone. <laughs> so it's such a beautiful book, you know? And... Um, then I met three very unusual World War II orf orphans, you know, in, in my life of faith here. And this is the story of one of them. He was a, an orphan from World War II. Luciano Finoli, I think a lot of people probably might know him. He gets around everywhere. He just goes and does everything. He's like a busy bee, you know. He showed up where I was... Um, <clears throat> fundraising at the time and doing work for the National Messiah Mission we had. And he just got excitedly talking about God's will in the ocean. And um, he said, look, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all these people together, you know, all the executives of all the fish companies in New York and try to get as many people out there fishing so that we can get people witnessing and bringing ministers out on the boat, you know. So I said, well, that's a hard task to do. You know, people are busy. And, and anyway, he says, but I'll do it only under one condition, that you stand and read the, the God's will in the ocean, you know, uh, while we're out fishing. So we started on the boat at, um, at 6 a.m. in the morning. And we had uh, somewhere like 10 or 11 people. I can't remember exactly but they were all the biggest people in our fishing businesses, you know, or vice presidents at the very least. And we had one professor from UTS. So we went out and um, we were in a contest that was being run out of Freeport with 600 other boats, all in a large shark fishing contest. So I think there was a $10,000 prize. And we went out there and I had my book and they had all the fishing rods. I wasn't going to do any fishing, just read. And uh, we spent 12 hours on the boat that day and it was overcast. It was sort of stormy. It was, um, you know, intermittently raining, but uh, it wasn't, it wasn't rough seas, but it was rough enough. And, uh, and to my surprise, Everyone within an hour was seasick. I'm not talking about one or two people, but absolutely every single person on the boat was seasick. They spent the entire 12 hours lying flat out on the boat. Not one person put a fishing rod in the water. 
you know. And I was there, I, I alone kept on reading for 12 hours except for to stop and have a sandwich. And that's the way the day went. But as I was reading this book, there was one man at my feet, you know. Um, he was a black American church professor uh, who taught at UTS. His name was uh, Professor Barrett. He had been there for years. He was really well liked. And every once in a while, as I was reading, I would hear, <laughs> you know, and then another hour. <laughs> he kept on getting excited about what he was hearing. I actually, I didn't even know that. I did. It was not until another time uh, where about a year later, I met um, a, a vice president of one of the companies. Who, so, so I met someone from UTS. That's what it was. And I introduced myself and they said, you're Douglas Moriarty? I go, yeah, what do I do now? <laughs> I'm in trouble. He says, you're famous. And I go, I'm famous? Uh-oh. <laughs> and then he said, yeah, you've been talked about all at UTS for the past year by the Professor Barrett, you know? So Professor Barrett was the man who was at my feet <laughs> and laughing. But he went back to UTS and he told this story so many times to so many people for the whole year. And the key thing of it was, um, he said, I never understood Reverend Sun Myung Moon until I heard it read to me, uh, God's will in the ocean. So he made me famous through that experience, you know, in UTS and, and people knew, really knew the story and I was really quite amazed, but he said, the key thing is that he said, I never understood Reverend Moon until I read God's will in the ocean, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's how I, I also felt when I read the book, I, I found it so exciting that I was talking about it all the time. And that inspired Luciano to get all these people together and go out on that fishing trip. And just one last thing, this guy, Luciano, the first day we went to Freeport to look, he said, watch what happens when I walk on this dock. You see all those people over there? They're not catching any fish. He actually said to me this. He says, watch what happens when I walk on this dock. He said, there'll be fish jumping all over the place. And my God, that's absolutely what happened. We walked on the dock. And the five or six people that were there all pulled in fish. And they were literally bouncing around on the wharf, you know. <laughs> It was a kind of an unusual thing. But um, Caritha um, Browning the other day mentioned that she had a book, God's Will in the Ocean. Anyone who's never read the book should, should really pick it up and read it. It should be, um, I think you'll really enjoy it. So thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Douglas. Actually, it's uh, time's up for us. It's, uh, I'm sure other people uh, have some things, but please save it for tomorrow. I'll just uh, share the screen and, and we can pray together. And... Let's begin.
Adieu, adieu, adieu. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. And bye. God bless. Bye. Thank you very so much. Happy John Yeah. In the chat, you will find the link to God's Will in the Ocean. I just put the chat, uh, the link to God's Will in the Ocean in the chat area. So thank you. Click on that before we get off. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, okay. Bye. 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 -bye.